How did he do it? How did one man get away with making the same movie over and over again, and yet different enough that each one reaches inside and tugs at your heartstrings? Now you may be saying to yourself, the same movie over and over? What do you mean? What do you mean by that? Well, let's start with the titles. Let's, let's read some uh, titles of some Ozu films. We have Early Spring, Late Spring, Late Autumn, An Autumn Afternoon, Early Summer, The End of Summer. Ozu! Now let's read some of the synopsises, some of the synopses for some of these films. Okay, 1949's Late Spring. Several people try to talk 27-year-old Noriko into marrying, but all she wants is to keep on caring for her widowed father. 1951's Early Summer. A family chooses a match for their daughter Noriko, but she, surprisingly, has her own plans. Now these are not, these are not the same Noriko. These are not. You might think, are these the same Noriko? They're played by the same actress. These are a different Noriko. Okay, Late Autumn. A widow tries to marry off her daughter with the help of her late husband's three friends. An autumn afternoon, an aging widower arranges a marriage for his only daughter. So are you picking up on the through line there? Are you picking up on the, the, the similarities? We have to get Noriko married. Noriko, you're 27 years old, Noriko. You're 27 years old. You're an old maid, Noriko, and we have to, we have to arrange a marriage for you. And yet, and yet, each one has enough of a twist on this theme. I find myself glued to the screen. Glued to the screen. Part of, part of what I find so magnetic about these films is that the dramas are so small and so quaint. You know, compared to, say, a film about a bank robbery or, or something, some sort of shoot them up, some sort of laser beam spaceship, shoot them up. You've got these very small, quaint dramas that for me, I, I just sort of find myself hanging on every word. The familiarity is part of what makes it so comfy. You've got, you know, both similar stories. You've got a uh, frequent collaborator in the screenwriter, Kogo Noda. He's co-writing all these screenplays with Ozu. And then you've got a lot of the same actors it's almost as if, I don't know, a theater playhouse style to filmmaking where you get all these, uh, this tight-knit contingent of actors together and you, uh, you sort of rearrange the pieces, but the, it's, it's really, that part of it, the familiarity works in its favor in a sense. And, and because it keeps sort of reiterating these different themes, it's, it's actually not just about finding Noriko a husband. You've got a post-war Japan trying to come come to terms with with uh, a, a new era of of modernization. You have a country that's becoming more westernized. You have a country where the women are becoming more liberated, where the youth are becoming more more sort of Americanized and, and coming into conflict with the more uh, their their more traditional elders. And you got all these. Uh, themes and dynamics that because they're repeated so often, it, I feel like it gives you a, a, a deeper, more complete historical context. Like there's not too many, uh, a film might give you a, a sort of very narrow uh, sliver of a certain uh, uh, time period. It might give you a certain uh, uh, window in, into a, a certain point in history, but because uh, he keeps sort of, again, going over the same themes you, I feel like you get a more complete picture, or, or at least you get a more detailed picture. This is a country that, this is a country that, not like five years ago, uh, a nuclear bomb had vaporized one of its cities, and then you've got a director. Uh, it barely touches on that. It touches on war a bit. Like uh, a lot of the characters are sort of veterans, and again, they're sort of trying to contend with a post-war Japan. But you you don't really. It, whether this is whether this was the censors at the time, whether this was just a cultural attitude, you would think a, a country that had just had a, a large segment of its population vaporized, you'd think there would be a certain darkness in its films, but you really don't get that from these movies. They're they're very much like 
almost a classy, a classy Hallmark channel type thing. Like very just sort of quaint. Here's another thing that really compels me about uh, these films. Part of the appeal to me is how, how, how much of a contrast it is to, to our modern mentally ill, I don't know, entertainment and culture. Just, you've got films that are about tight, tightly knit family units. You know, you've got a, a couple and they might be living with their elderly parents and their children and you've got, uh, the whole family is still together. And so you get the sense that when they do interact with people outside of that family union, they're treating each other as if they are family. Like you've got a, a, a country that, that doesn't, a country that's not racked with the constant mel mental illness of just hating each other, of just wanting to uh, tear each other apart based on their differences or whatever. You've got a country rooted in just like tradition, dealing with these very sort of very quaint dramas, very quaint conflicts. And it's just a sort of alien wholesomeness that feels really necessary and absent from modern life. You, you, you get a very whimsical, melancholy feeling that, you know, maybe this is even a, 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 an attitude that Japan has turned away from. I, I don't know. I don't have any reference for that, but it's certainly an attitude that is just completely foreign to modern America. Now, of course, uh, not all of Ozu's films are actually this similar. He's, he's directed like 50 some films and you've got, you've got like Dragnet Girl, you've got Good Morning, you've got Tokyo Story, which is, I think it does have a bit of that. Like I think it also has them trying to get Noriko uh, remarried, but it, it's different enough. He does have a, a really sort of varied repertoire, but these, these, there's a, this stretch of films is pretty similar, I think. And uh, he, he died fairly young. Ozu died in his 60s. And it's a shame because he still seemed like a really vital filmmaker. Again, even after reiterating sort of the same movie with the same plot and themes over and over again. I don't know. I recommend it. You, you can find uh, all of these uh, films on HBO Max. If you've got the HBO Max, you got all these great films right at your fingertips. It would probably bore most people to tears. But I think like once you get into it, Again, I, I'm, I find myself never bored. You would think watching so many movies with so many similar themes and just and, and plot points and, and you would think it would get boring. But for me, I don't know. I, I always find it uh, really interesting and, and engaging. Okay, goodbye.